Hi, I'm Dan Sullivan, and for the past 16 years I've been teaching electrical systems uh, theory, operation, and diagnostics to the heavy truck and heavy equipment industries. Uh, I've, been a, I've been an aircraft mechanic for 30 years and have actually worked in uh, pretty much every transportation industry there is. Marine, rail, equipment, mining, trucking, some in automotive, and in aviation. And the one thing I've always done in those particular uh, industries is electricity and electrical diagnostics. The purpose of this video is to provide a little bit of training on the cranking system of a large class 8 truck. And the reason I'm providing it is because of the concerns I have about this document uh, which was produced by the TMC, which is the Technology and Maintenance Council of the American Trucking Association. Um, this document specifically is RP, or Recommended Practice 129A, and it's entitled Heavy Duty Vehicle Cranking and Charging Troubleshooting 12 Volt Systems. Well, I have several concerns about this document and its purpose uh, and its scope because uh, it contains a, a several uh, glaring errors in explanation and description and uh, what's worse is that it's not a real troubleshooting document it's not designed to troubleshoot and test systems in the field okay now this might be useful to somebody doing a PM in a shop on a truck but if the truck is broken down on the side of the road and you're in field service out there trying to fix it you're not going to be using this document to do it and this document is essentially worthless for that. The best I can figure is it was probably written by an engineer who has no field experience whatsoever and as I've read through it with, uh, in more detail it actually starts to appear to be an advertisement, a 12 page advertisement for a special electronic battery and charging system diagnostic tool. Now I did some, did some homework and uh, having been involved in the Supertech competition in the cranking and charging area. I saw the tool that this um, RP talks about and what I find very intriguing is that um, this document is essentially promoting that tool specifically and it uh, is curious to me that a commercial um, product would end up in a TMC document given that the TMC is considered to be entirely non-commercial. So uh, whoever the inventor was of this particular machine that was used at the Supertech um, obviously uh, has some involvement with TMC somehow and um, this tool found its way into the competition and found its way into, a, into an RP. So, And in most cases people don't fully understand how the system works. So we're going to go over that and I'm also going to go over the starter voltage drop test because um, this document is essentially telling you how to do voltage drops which are well known and well understood and certainly do not require a $1200 specific diagnostic tool for setting it up and doing the test. You can do the test with a, a set of double voltmeter leads that is uh, connected to the meter with two drop cords that takes this to the starter and to the battery at the same time and a switch that allows you to switch between them so you can actually read the voltage drop across the batteries and the starter in one test. And for additional diagnostics I have a set of jumper leads that connects to the battery that will allow me to put voltage directly to the starter relay and directly to the starter solenoid. So it's a, a fairly simple system because all three circuits are identical and all a person has to do is learn and understand the system and when they do then the diagnostic steps become obvious. Okay, here, here's what the system is. There are three circuits, okay? And I'll start this time with the key. So we have a fuse, we have a key switch, and then we have a coil. And that coil is in the starter relay. And that coil has two terminals on the side that allow you to put 12 volts right there 
And if you put 12 volts right there, then that coil should energize and the whole rest of the system should work. So that's a very simple test. If you want to rule all of this out, just put 12 volts there and watch what happens. <laughs> Okay, well the starter relay has a set of contacts. So here's the starter relay contacts. The starter relay contacts come from the battery. This is going through the starter relay. These are the two big studs on the outside and then these go to another coil. And again, the coil has terminals. This is the starter solenoid. There's the starter solenoid coil. So when you turn the key, it energizes this coil. And by the way, you can use a compass on this coil. And if you turn the key, the compass needle should swing. If the compass needle swings, it means you have current flow of some kind, rules out opens and shorts. So the starter relay coil energizes, which closes those contacts down here in the uh, battery box. And then those contacts turn on the starter solenoid, which is on top of the, on top of the starter. Well, then the starter motor or the cranking motor circuit is identical because we go through another set of contacts and these are the starter solenoid contacts and then they go to the cranking motor okay so that's the system that's that's how the system works now all of this testing is nothing more then reading the voltage drop across that, that, and that. And if you can read the voltage drop across this, you know the full condition of that circuit. If you can read the voltage drop across this, you know the full condition of that circuit. If you know the voltage drop across this, you know the full condition of that circuit. So the whole system can be tested with three voltage tests, and if you know how to interpret it, then you'll know what the problem is. But let me explain how I do this. On this particular truck, I go right here first, and I put 12 volts here. Why? If this turns on and all of this works, then I get to rule out all of this and that, which means it has to be in the start or in the key circuit. But if I energize this, and it, none of this works, but I turn the key and the compass swings, if you put a compass here, then that pretty much rules out that circuit because you would also probably hear these contacts close. Well, then it becomes a question of, well, if this is working but these two ain't, what are we gonna do to test that? Well, there are a couple of things. You can use your uh, uh, remote start switch to go across the starter relay or two screwdrivers, whatever. And if that turns, then you know the problem's in this circuit. So you want to do testing that's going to be appropriate to figure out which two of these circuits are working. So the question you want to ask is not what's wrong. The question you want to ask is what's right. And the reason is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six circuit segments and only one of them is going to fail which means when you test when you go through the testing five of them are going to test normally and when you get to the segment that is not working properly then that is obviously the one that's going to be needing repair So, what are your options? Well, you can unplug here and read the voltage from the key with a voltmeter. That's easy. Then load the circuit and you know the uh, key circuit uh, condition. You can force this relay to energize by putting 12 volts here and here. And that should make the rest of this turn. 
you can jump across these starter relay contacts right here in the battery box to see if this works. And if this works, then you rule out this, this, and this. But if you jump across here and this goes clunk but nothing happens, then it's going to be in the starter motor circuit. The um, starter voltage drop test is simple. Battery, starter, solenoid contacts, and this time I'm going to draw the motor right next to them because that's where they are. This goes straight in there, this comes out and goes to ground. The starter voltage drop test is very simple. You're going to put a voltmeter across both components at the same time using a special set of leads that allow you to do this test in one step. Now here's what happens. You're going to crank the engine. This voltage is going to be the amount of voltage the batteries are providing. This voltage is going to be the amount of voltage that the starter is using. Now I put the starter, I put the uh, lead here to include the contacts with the starter because that minimizes the number of tests you have to make. So what, we, what happens? If this number is 10 and this number is 10, there's no missing voltage in the cables, replace the starter. That's because there's no loss and the battery's providing enough energy. All right, what if you have seven volts and seven volts? Well, you still can't have a problem in the cables because the numbers are the same. When the numbers are the same, the cables are good. And if it's seven here, seven here, then the batteries probably need to be charged because I wouldn't expect the starter to be running on seven volts. The third step is, what if this is 10 and this is six? Well, I don't expect this to be running on six, and the 10 and the six mean that there's four lost in the cable somewhere. So if this number is higher than this number significantly, in some cases a half a volt or 2%, some manufacturers say, then the, the proper repair is to go after the cables. And if you have two different numbers here and you replace the batteries of the starter, then you've made a mistake. So this test, is incredibly simple, takes about five minutes to set up, and it takes less than a couple of seconds to do, and the outcome is absolutely infallible. So you're comparing this number to this number and making a decision about what's wrong in this circuit by comparing those two numbers together, and if you do it right, this test cannot fail. Here's the thing, only one of those circuits is gonna fail, okay? And I can pretty much guarantee you that only one half of one of those circuits is going to fail. So you've got the positive sides on the positive side of the switches, and you've got the ground side or the negative side on the negative side of the switches. So there are six segments. I can pretty much guarantee you that only one of those six is going to fail. So five of them are going to work right. So the question you need to be asking yourself is, what's working right? Okay. Um, let me just point out that 80% of faults in electrical systems occur in wires. Okay, so if you walk out to a vehicle and say it's a wire, before you do anything else, you're gonna be right about 80% of the time. So just going out to a vehicle expecting it to be that, and then expecting it to be something simple in the wiring is a much better way to start than by going out assuming it's gonna be something big. The mechanical way of thinking is very, very harmful to electrical diagnostics. And because technicians and mechanics are most commonly involved in replacing parts that are broken, the tendency to want to replace parts in electrical systems um, sort of overcomes logic. And the logic would be, before doing anything else, do what the manufacturers want you to do, and that's to um, inspect all the wiring. Because the best way to avoid feeling stupid is to go out knowing that it's going to be one green connector or one green butt splice. And when you find it, then you're a genius. So going from feeling like an idiot to feeling like a genius only requires a slight shift in your attitude. 
by understanding that the majority of problems are going to be in wiring, and I'd be willing to bet that every one of you who may or may not be watching this um, would say that in your past experience, the majority of things that have gone wrong have gone wrong small in circuitry. So play those odds, and you're going to be better off. Okay? What people don't so, realize is that motors are also generators. So the reason battery cables get hot when the starter is turning slowly is because the starter is less of a generator. Because what happens is the battery voltage and the generator voltage buck heads. So the batteries may be providing you with 10, but the starter might be producing 7 backwards. So if it's 10 this way and 7 this way, the starter is only running on 3. Okay, so as the starter slows down, it becomes less of a generator, and that difference becomes bigger. And when the difference becomes bigger, that's more voltage, and more voltage means more current, and that's Ohm's law.